address. moment, it's been a year, it's been a year of a lot of loss and heartache for 
Massachusetts military families. I just want to invite all military families and veterans who are with us tonight in the chamber to stand.
We also made school meals, both breakfast and lunch, free for all students. Housekeeping 
custodial departments. We're going to do that all around the state. Connect new arrivals with employers while we continue to advocate for Massachusetts.
to get our roads and our rails moving, help our businesses and workers thrive, and meet the climate challenge by creating clean energy careers across our state. This is the work ahead of us, and I wait. It starts with how the biggest Thank you. 
outside tomorrow. Our top. So let's work together. Because the truth is, 51 cities, no city, when it comes to we have to to help in the communities.
Our high school students are telling us that what they learn in school should help them get to where they want to go. So we'll keep growing our early college programs so you can go to high school and earn community college credits and college credits at the same time. We'll invest more in innovation pathways that provide hands-on, work-based learning while you're in school. That's going to connect our students to lifelong opportunities, whether college or skilled careers. And it's going to be great for our workforce and for our economy. I see every day so much strength in our young people, amazing young people around the state. But for too long, too many children and teens haven't felt okay. There's a crisis in youth mental health. It's hurting our young people, it's stressing parents and straining families. And we have to do everything we can to address that. Now last year, we expanded school-based mental health support from early childhood to higher ed. We also launched 26 community behavioral health centers to provide urgent in-person crisis response around the clock. They've served thousands of children already. And in just one year, we've cut in half emergency room stays for youth mental health. That's real impact. We know what's working, so we're going to do more of it with support in school and in community. And for young people with the most complex needs, we'll address a serious gap in services. Our budget will call for $10 million to develop service models, including residential, that ensure the most vulnerable young people get the care they need and parents get support. Let's be a state where every young person knows that it's okay to sometimes not be okay, and we will help you. I want Senate President Spilka for her profound leadership on this issue. She set us on the right path with the Mental Health ABC Act. She shared her family's own struggle with mental health and in doing so further helped to destigmatize what so many parents, what so many kids, what so many families have experienced at home. She also made sure, and I know I look forward to continuing to work to make sure that in this state, mental health is valued just as much as physical health. Thank you, Senator President.
finally rebuilding the Cape Cod Bridges. There's much more to come, and we are going to continue to get after it every single day. For the MBTA, we appointed General Manager Phil Lang. We also work with life science and healthcare leaders 
to pitch and win a national club in ARPA H. ARPA H, this is a big deal of America's medical discovery moonshot. It's going to drive investment through our economy, and it makes Massachusetts more likely to be the place where the next, next life-saving vaccine is produced, where world-changing cures for cancer, for Alzheimer's, for heart disease are going to come from. And it wasn't only our world-class science that won the day, which is something we all should be proud of. It was our commitment to making sure that those next medical breakthroughs reach everyone, no matter who you are or what you can pay. Tonight, I am honored that we are joined by Director Renee Wiggerson and the ARPA H team, including
The truth is that our cities and towns are deeply impacted by climate change. We see it already. We saw it in the floods this summer. Heck, we saw it this weekend, the devastation, particularly on our coastlines. So many communities dealing with unprecedented damage. In August, I stood in the kitchen of a restaurant owner in North Andover who was cleaning up slop, watching years of hard work absolutely destroyed by a storm. A month later, I was with a homeowner in North Andover whose house took on six feet of water in 20 minutes. It was condemned before my eyes. And that was on a road that had never seen flooding before. That's what it looks like when old infrastructure meets today's storms. We have to protect our homes. We have to protect our businesses for the long term and right now. Our communities need help. Our residents deserve a better response. So we're going to increase funding to help cities and towns shore up riverbanks, fix failing dams, fix drainage
Thank you, Governor, for that excellent and rousing and motivating inspirational speech. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Good job. Good job. I will now ask Rabbi Claudia Cranin, Senior Rabbi of Temple Beth Zion in Brookline, and Dr. M. Faisal Khan, Director of Religious Affairs and the Imam at the Islamic Center of Boston, to come up to the rostrum to offer our benediction for the evening. An honor to be here today as an American citizen, an immigrant to this country, an immigrant to this fine state. I want to ask Que Dios los ilumine y agracie. 
Que Dios los favorezca y les dé una vida de paz, bendición y plenitud. May Adonai, may God bless you and protect you. May God show you kindness and be gracious to you. May God bestow favor upon you and grant you peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. In the Holy Quran, God tells us, Inna Allah ya'amu min adli wa l'ihsan, wa yitayi al-kurba wa yanha al-fakshari wa al-munkari wa al-badhi, la yilukun la'al lakum tadakkarun. Surely, God enjoins justice, the doing of good, and being generous to your friends and relatives and forbids all that is unjust, blameworthy, or oppressive. He instructs you, so perhaps you would be mindful. Dear brothers and sisters, as we depart this wonderful ceremony today and prepare for the work to be done tomorrow, let us reflect for a moment on how what Gabri Hili has so eloquently tasked us with reflects in many ways what the governor of all governors asks us of our us of all. He tells us to be just, to be kind, to be generous, to create a state and a nation that looks after those who live within it, regardless of who they are or how they look, to take care of the poor, the sick, the aging, and those left behind. He tells us to avoid aggression and oppression, and we ask God, the one who listens to all prayer, that he strengthens us and aids us in achieving these objectives. We are grateful indeed to the Almighty God that we live in a state and a nation that from its founding has aspired to these values, but we are reminded every day, and indeed by the address today, that there's work to be done yet. There's work to be done here in Massachusetts, there's work to be done in the broader United States, and there's work to be done around the world, especially around what we can aspire to be and our common humanity. It is he who has created you all from a single soul. Whether you wear the cross, the yamaka, or the hijab. Brothers and sisters, there is no daylight between us. We are all created as one. We arrive and we leave as we are. And in between that time, our aim, God tells us, is to be the best of who we can be. Indeed, we pray as individuals, as family members, as leaders of small towns or big cities, and of the state government itself, that he gives us the fortitude to be the best of who we can be. We're reminded that service to our neighbors, to our environment, to our oceans, and to earth is service to the Almighty Himself. We pray to Him that He eases these tasks for us, that He opens the path for us to do what is right, no matter how difficult it may be. We're told, brothers and sisters, that if we save one life, it is as if we have saved the whole of humanity. And so, by the privilege granted to us of being citizens of this great state, and of this great nation, we ask, dear God, to let us be the ones who call for and try to end war where it may be raging, protect innocent civilian life suffering under oppression, end the cycle of violence, especially on those most vulnerable amongst us, and bring our medical knowledge to the elimination of disease and the fight on poverty. We pray to Almighty God to make us the best of who we can be so as to overcome our differences, be they black, white, or brown, be they blue leaning or red leaning, left or right, so that we may work for the betterment of all, work to eliminate homelessness, alleviate mental hardship, increase wellness, and to help those who may be caught in the web of addiction, to opioids, to alcohol, or to any substance, and work to, hate, to end hate in all its forms, race, gender, anti-Semitic, or Islamophobic. We pray to the God of all knowledge to inspire our leaders, from those serving in our capital to those in the many cities and towns of the Commonwealth. Drop them in our system, and we ask that in our duties we have your help, in difficulty your counsel, in peril your protection, and in sorrow your peace. May we leave this chamber with God's peace, may we walk in his path, and may we and our families always be under the umbrella of his protection. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Kramer.
a cappella from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, who will perform an arrangement of the song Valerie. <laughs>
to remain seated while the Sergeant in Arms escorts the Governor, the Lieutenant Governor, the Constitutional Officers, the Executive Counselors, and all of our distinguished guests from the Chamber. Thank you very much.